Students, in this class, we are going to see dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor that is trimethoprim and synergism of this dihydrofolate reductase inhibitors with sulfonamide and sulfones. So, first we will see about dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor trimethoprim. So, what is that? It is a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor. So, what is the role? What is the role of this enzyme? That one is used to convert dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid. So, trimethoprim will inhibit that conversion. And this trimethoprim, no, that is structurally related to several antimalarials, but it is not having good antimalarial activity by itself. However, it is a potent antimalarial. Actually, it is introduced in combination with sulfamethoxazole, but now it is available as a single agent and it is approved as an agent in the treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infection. As a single agent, this uh, trimethoprim will rapidly develop resistance, but in combination with sulfonamide, it would not be so. This is the structure of trimethoprim. So, what it is having? From the name itself, we are saying trimetho. So, it is having three methoxy groups. It is having three methoxy groups and prim that indicates one pyrimidine nucleus. So, what role it is having? One phenyl that is having three methoxy groups with CH2. With the CH2, what is attached? Diamino pyrimidine is attached. So, that is the structure of trimethoprim. So, what is the chemical name? For the chemical name, numbering is very, very important starting from here. So, one, two, three. 4, 5, 6. This is for pyrimidine and for this one, for phenyl, the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, the whole thing no. So, this would be attached to the fifth position of pyrimidine. Here, pyrimidine is chosen as a parent. So, everything is attached to the fifth position of pyrimidine. That is why 5 open bracket. Here, we have 3, 4, 5 trimethoxy. This is phenyl methyl. Close the bracket and 2, 4 diamino pyrimidine or 2, 4 pyrimidine diamine. So, that is the chemical name of trimethoprim. Now, we will see the synthesis of trimethoprim. For this, the starting material is 3, 4, 5 trimethoxy benzaldehyde that would be taken. This is on reduction we are getting. Here we have aldehyde now. So, aldehyde on reduction we are getting primary alcohol. Already we have known primary alcohol on oxidation we are getting aldehyde. So, the reverse. So, aldehyde on reduction we are getting primary alcohol. So, what is for primary alcohol? CH2OH. So, instead of writing CHO, we have to write CH2OH. Then on treatment with thionyl chloride we are getting here we are getting chloro derivative so oh is replaced by means of chlorine now with that we are adding ethyl cyanoacetate so by the addition of that what happens this cl combines with cn and that would be removed so in the place of cl what is attached ch2 coo c2h5 is attached So, that is called as hydroxycinamic ester. So, with that we are adding ethyl formate. So, what is ethyl formate? HCOOC2H5. So, on the addition of ethyl formate, what happens here? Second carbon O that is having CH2. So, two hydrogens. So, one hydrogen combines with OC2H5 and removed as C2H5OH. So, here we have CHO we have. So, with that, that one more hydrogen is added and that would be converted to CHOH and that is added with the second carbon. So, that is why we are getting this one. Then, this one is treated with guanidine. So, what is guanidine? So, many times we have come across this. We have known the structure for urea. What is that? NH2, C double bond O, NH2 that is called urea. And here, oxygen is replaced by means of NH means that is called as guanidine. So, guanidine is added with that. So, what happens? Here, guanidine is having NH no from that. H is added with OH and removed as water. So, with the CH, what is added? The nitrogen is added. And with the nitrogen, already it is connected with carbon, carbon with NH2. So, here with the CH, N would be added and that is connected with CNH2. And here we have two hydrogens, you know, from that. 
one nitrogen is taken and that is combined with C2H5O and removed as C2H5OH. So, we have NH here. So, from that the one more hydrogen is there now that is added with oxygen and that would be converted to OH and that is added with the carbon and that carbon is connected with this nitrogen and we are getting pyrimidine ring. So, with the pyrimidine water all attached this NH is attached and from that one hydrogen here that oxygen. So, that would be converted to OH. So, we are getting pyrimidine that is having hydroxy group and N amino group. So, that one on chlorination by means of POCl3, the hydroxy group now that is replaced by means of chlorine. Then on amination by means of ammonia, the chlorine is replaced by means of NH2 and we are getting trimethoprim. That is all about the synthesis of trimethoprim. By giving the combination of sulfonamides with folate reductase inhibitors, we are getting synergistic effect and that one is used in antibacterial therapy. Example is sulfamethoxazole is combined with trimethoprim that can be called as cotrimoxazole or septron or bactrim. Here we are getting bacteriostatic activity. So, what is the role of sulfamethoxazole? That one is inhibiting the utilization of PABA in the formation of dihydrofolic acid because of the structural similarity with PABA. And what is the role of trimethoprim? That one is inhibiting the enzyme. What is the name of the enzyme? Dihydrofolate reductase. So, what is the use of that, uh, that enzyme? That one is used to convert dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. So, trimethoprim is inhibiting the enzyme called dihydrofolate reductase. Why we have selected sulfamethoxazole? because it has a similar pharmacokinetic properties to that of trimethoprim that is why we have selected sulfamethoxazole. So, it is co-administered with the trimethoprim. So, what is the ratio here we are using that is 5 is to 1. What is the use of that? That is used in the treatment of infections of urinary, intestinal and the lower respiratory tract. It is also effective in acute otitis media, chronic bacterial prostates, meningococcal infection, gonorrhea, nocardiasis and antibiotics resistant salmonella and shigella infections. We have known the structure of these two. So, what is the structure of sulfamethoxazole already we have seen. So, what is the heterocyclic ring present here that is called isoxazole and that is having methyl group. So, what is the basic one for all the sulfonamides that is called sulfanilamido moiety. Now, what is the structure of trimethoprim? From the name itself we can say trimetho. So, it is having three methoxy groups and that is connected with phenyl and prim that is indicating pyrimidine and that is having two amino groups and these two are connected by means of methylene bridge. The last one is sulfones. What is the prototype of sulfone? That is called as dapsone. It is used in the treatment of leprosy. That is lepromatis and tuberculosis types of leprosy and it is also used in all forms of leprosy often in combination with the clofazimine and rifampin. For this the initial treatment includes rifampin with dapsone followed by dapsone alone. It is also used to prevent the occurrence of multi basilary leprosy when given prophylactically. It is a drug of choice for dermatitis herpetiformis. Sometimes it is used with pyrimethamine for the treatment of malaria and with trimethoprim for PCP. So, this is the structure of dapsone. What is that? It is having two phenyl. With the phenyl, what is attached? Para portion we are having amino group and in center we are having sulfone SO2. So, what is that? Para, para dash, di amino, di phenyl sulfone. So, that is the chemical name of dapsone. Now, we will see the synthesis of dapsone. So, what is the synthesis? Starting material for that is 4 nitro chlorobenzene. So, this is called as chlorobenzene and here para portion we have nitro that is why 4 nitro chlorobenzene. Two molecules we are taking that with that we are adding disodium sulfide Na2S we are adding. So, with actually what happens that 2 Na combines with these 2 Cl and removed as 2 NaCl and this sulfur occupies the center position. So, we are getting this one. Okay. Then on oxidation by means of chromic acid what happens? Sulfur is oxidized and we are getting sulfone and the last step is reduction. Nitro group is reduced, we are getting amino group. So, in the two portions, these two nitro no that would be reduced and we are getting amino. So, that is the synthesis of dapsone.
Now we'll see the side effects of Dapsone. They are hemolytic anemia, methemoglobinemia and toxic effects. This hemolytic effects can be increased in patients with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. That's all about Dapsone.